Hello, welcome, good morning, and thank you for joining. <clears throat> Jumping right in. I hope you can hear me. Got an echo. Oh no. All right. That's why we still do the sound check. Oh, hey, I know what it is. All right. <clears throat> Should be fixed. And good morning, Dr. Gonzo. I'm glad you're here today, sir. All right. <laughs> hey, Smallio. Glad you're here, too. Uh, yeah, so... Hey, Detail Devil. Good day. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Santa, my friend. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. Just going to go through today's list. Um, and good morning to everybody. Sector, good morning. <clears throat> so, uh, very exciting today. We've got a... Uh, <laughs> We've got uh, some exciting non-Morrowind news, but I'm going to get through the list first. We got 5.10 is out, release of our own website. <clears throat> Excuse me, RWC is out with the final version of the demo. Um, hey, a fan, good day, welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me, expansion resource conflicts. Wow, that was a deep dive, um, and we'll get into that in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a new mod list that I cooked up for 6.0. I call it Just Good Morrowind. We'll get into that later. Um, couple features that we have developed, uh, thanks in part uh, by some suggestions from our friend Shinino on Discord. Um, no data path in the database. There should be no mod field on the detail page. Um, somebody emailed me about uh, an interesting idea for checkboxes on the CFG generator. We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, and also, I, after uh, another conversation with Shinino, realized we should have uh, some kind of a disclaimer on list independent mod detail pages uh, for mods that do actually have a presence on a list. And then, you know, um, we'll deploy the website as needed um, if there is a need. Today's soundtrack brought to you by these wonderful people. Um, hopefully you can hear it just ever so quietly. And uh, yeah, soundtrack, woo. It's very interesting, like, moving my um, interface in between my actual PC and my laptop. Um, and just, you expect it to just work. Anyways, um, yeah, so moving on, um, our friend in the community, Billy Fighter, who has brought us quite a few amazing mods, is actually working on uh, an indie game project called Necroslayer. And um, I believe it's made with Unity. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an interesting gameplay take on the kind of like vampire survivors um, sort of gameplay, but in a setting that would resemble, you know, kind of like Elder Scrolls. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's been really cool to watch Billy kind of develop this, and um, I'm pretty excited to check it out, run it on my Steam Deck. Um, so yeah, mad props to, uh, to Billy Fighter, and thank you for all the stuff. Yeah, Santa, I figure you would be into this one for sure. Um, I just wish listed it, so check it out on Steam. Um, and yeah, Billy Fighter, good guy, great designer, um, big friend of the community. <clears throat> Sword and board RPGs. What do you mean by that, Gonzo? I'm not, uh, Dr. Gonzo, I'm not familiar with that term. <laughs> Sword and board RPG. So yeah, thank you, Billy Fighter. Props, good luck. I hope this is, a, you know, an ex a success. <clears throat> um... Moving on, we got the website 5.10.0 release is out. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you to Dr. Gonzo. Um, oh, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Sector. I'm not cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Ifane. Hype. Very hype. Um, uh, Dr. Gonzo and I, we really ground, and, and Herdrax as well. Um, we all put in a ton of time, and we're basically at a point where the content of the website is all represented in data files. You don't really have to edit python code to change things right there's no hacks in the cfg generator anymore there's some mistakes still <laughs> we'll get into that but um no hacks so it's really great huge thanks to everybody um thank you to shinino opened you know caught quite a few issues pointing things out being our guinea pig so yeah big time hype um speaking of the hype train we got rwc which is out let me just go ahead and uh we got that actually on Nexus mods now too, so they're gonna get a really huge audience. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and yeah, the final version of the demo, which we streamed last week and had a pretty good time playing actually. Uh, I thought it was really well thought out. 
a really neat design that made me think of Metroid Prime with some cool puzzles in there. Um, I was too much of a dum-dum to kind of get some of them, but I really appreciated like the satellite dish one, for example. After I got it, it was like, oh yeah, cool design, you know? Um, so yeah, mad props to, oh, hey, look, <laughs> cool. Uh, my name is in there now. Very cool. Um, yeah. So props to them, and uh, we've got a working app image now. Last week when I was streaming, we didn't have like the inventory menu. I actually got through the whole demo without healing myself uh, with healing items, which may explain why I was dying quite a lot. Um, and it runs on the Steam Deck. I capped my frame rate at 30 FPS, and it was a silky smooth experience, actually. You know, I don't really care for shooters with a joystick kind of setup. The motion aiming helps a little bit, though. Um, the gyro aiming, you know, on the Steam Deck. But yeah, good times, great hype, and uh, most respect and congratulations to the team. And I look forward to the next level and the full game developing out. Uh, MOMW Gameplay actually is a new thing that I put together over the past few weeks. Uh, let me pull that one up. I am ill-prepared. Ill Here we go. And this is a this is a little Lua mod that I put together to uh, kind of balance out the uh, Hey Sophia, good morning, welcome. So glad you're here today. We're just uh, taking a look at some new stuff. Thank you for joining. Um, and yeah, so I put together the MOMW gameplay script as kind of a I don't know. I've been like furiously playing like the first two or three hours of the game for the past several months getting a feel for kind of how it is, you know? Because um, I feel like that's a really crucial part, especially to a new player. Um, and so I kind of, I came up with this list of things that I have changed to make the early game a bit more fun. <clears throat> Notably, I have toned down the, um, we got right here, the fatigue multiplier on a couple of Sotha's mods. I just felt like, in particular, when it's early game and maybe you're not a super pro, you know, with your weapon skills, you're just losing too much fatigue all the time. And um, it just felt really grindy. And so this puts it closer to vanilla levels. There's almost no multiplier, but there is still the, whoops. Don't try that at home. There is still the, uh, you got skill, you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> Um, but there is still the, so speaking of skill though, for the t uh, time directional attacks, if you click spam, you will still get that penalty. I left that at the default. I considered making that hard. Um, so to clarify, for the time directional attacks, uh, let's just, I'll show you right now. There we go. Yeah. So for the time directional attack, um, you, ha you have to time your attacks, kind of. You can't just sit there and click spam. And if you do, there is a penalty uh, a fatigue penalty, and I felt like that was actually pretty fair to discourage the click spamming. You know what I'm saying? Um, whoa, 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 whoa! Sheesh! Uh, we don't need to. So, for example, if I just uh, equip this steel claymore, and then I start like, you see, just see how my fatigue. I'm click spamming right now. You cannot do that, or you will have a bad time. You will get very tired. Um, I liked that mechanic. I think that's fair, right? To encourage actually playing the timed attack game and doing it right and encouraging that. Um, and, you know, players are absolutely free to kind of go in here and um, first off to not load the gameplay Lua mod, which is safe to enable or disable at any time. There's nothing that it does except for change those settings, you know? So if you disable it today, re-enable it tomorrow, no big deal. Um, and yeah, you can you can disable it and come on in here and just, you know, you think, oh, Johnny, I got skills. I can handle it. And you can come in here and, uh, oh, that's not the one. Wait, e charge text. Here we go. You can say, I got skills. I can handle a little bit more. And you can uh, but just bump that up. Again, one is the default. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some way we could, like, scale it with your level, you know, so when you get more skills, um, something to think about. But I figured this was a reasonably good tweak to start and uh you know just a quick peek at the lua there really isn't anything to it um just getting the the settings from the storage module for each mod seeing if it's loaded if uh whoop, <laughs> whoa 
if the mod is not loaded, these variables up here that we that we yank are gonna, just going to be nil. So we can say if ACS action camera swap, excuse me, action camera swap, if it's installed, show me no messages. Um, and yeah, so as you can see here, any mod that is spammy with pop-up messages, we silence them, including a few of my own. Uh, but in particular, yeah, Sothas, all the messages from Sothas, I felt it's a bit more immersive to have the pop-ups off and you can know when you goofed by seeing your fatigue, you know, chop down. Um, for me, it worked out pretty good. So, MOMW gameplay, that's going to be a 6.0 edition for sure, but you could definitely um, grab it right now and throw it into your setup if you so desire. Uh, again, if you don't have one of the mods it tweaks, it just passes it up. So, cool, cool, yes. Yeah, 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 you don't have to wait for it at all. Um, so that's what this is all about, uh, the, these if checks here. Um, this just ends up being, this one right here that we set up here, just ends up being nil if the mod isn't installed. So, um, uh, oh yeah, hey, uh, you might, Remember, it's Catastrophe, who is sometimes in the chat. Uh, he gave me this shirt years ago. Um, man, like eight years ago now, right after or before Fallout 4 came out. But thank you. Um, yeah, Detail Devil, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Um, these are just, again, you know, this is to help people out who are maybe new to these mods. They don't know what to, maybe you didn't like the pop-ups or you thought there was too much fatigue drain, but you didn't know what to change. Don't worry, I looked into it. I did it for you. And again, you can disable this at any time, enable it at any time. Um, the idea is to give people a consistent, fun experience, right? I want, I don't want the game to be super easy Todd mode, but at the other, you know, at the other point, I, I want it to be a little challenging, but I felt like the fatigue was just like a little grindy. Um, Ooh, moving on. So yeah, <laughs> expansion resource conflicts. This was a bit of a rabbit hole to go down and a big thanks to Altario for bringing this up on the stream a few weeks ago, but, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh. I'll get into that in a minute, Sector. Thank you. Um, I'll talk about that next. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, expansion resource conflicts. This is crazy because um, if you didn't know, in the original Morrowind game, this, for example, looks like this, right? Um, however, after tribunal came out they started to look like this and if you went ahead and thought you were clever and thought i'll fix the texture you'll break what's in tribunal it had to actually be done thoughtfully which is what this mod does boom and here we have it but yeah i mean i didn't actually realize this was a thing you have the same case here for these ones um which is what actually spurred the conversation <clears throat> excuse me you have the same situation here you fix one you break the other until unless you do it thoughtfully um and so i had the idea i'm like hey let's on the stream let's take a look at what this does and i discovered something really interesting uh and i will show you right now what that is yes okay yes also thank you for bringing that up sector i will put that on the list Two. <laughs> All right. Um, so I had the genius idea. I was like, hey, let's show on the stream. I'll show you. It's okay, my man. I very much appreciate it. Um, let's add to the list. So I thought, oh, yeah, I will show folks on the stream just what happens, you know, because of this. Um, and so I got this idea, okay, let's fire up the game, let's load just Morrowind, and as it turns out, <clears throat> the GOG version of the game, I don't know about the Steam version, but you'll note, oh, that's not the right texture, that's not the green texture. The GOG version, as it turns out, ships with loose files extracted that apparently were not, um, you know, it's not exactly how Morrowind shipped in 2001. So your GOG version is just busted out of the box no matter what you do um, because the loose files are there in the data files folder. So you really, the only recourse you have is this brilliant mod, which is going to be a 6.0 addition to basically every mod list. Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things you can't unsee it now. Like, I had no idea the orange thing isn't what I needed to have there, but absolutely. I mean, you know, these being outside, that is absolutely an old right this is a way more appropriate texture so um just awesome and kind of a weird thing like you know developers can break their own games Woo, who knew that's a todd riffic fact right there 
Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first off, um, Sector has asked about Delta plugin BCOM 3.0, um, <laughs> 3.0 issues. And so, to kind of, to kind of, in a nutshell, clarify. <clears throat> um. You know, Sophia, I I'm actually not sure. That's a great question. I would think that that is appropriate for patch for purists. Um, I think maybe it does, but like in our mod lists, you might have another, uh, replacer that, um, unfixes it. That's worth an issue, honestly. Um, just so we can like understand, you know, what affects this situation. So yeah, yeah, I didn't either, man. Detail devil, um, until we were streaming and Altario pointed it out. It was like, wait a minute, you don't have that fixed. And I'm just like, huh? You know, and it had been so long. Geez, probably since the Xbox, really, or when I played it on PC with my CD version of the game. Uh, Titties retexture used the original one. Interesting. Yeah, so I mean, uh, that's worth some, that's worth some investigation to find out kind of what unfixes the fix, perhaps, if it is indeed present inside Patch for Purist. Um, so, Delta plugin 3.0, uh, BCUM 3.0. So in BCUM 3.0 with the Waterworks module, let's just let's just go there right now. What ends up happening um, if you don't tell Delta plugin to skip cells? Which, by the way, most merging tools, and by most I mean uh, TES3 merge by Null Cascade, does not merge cells to my knowledge. Um, Delta plugin is unique in doing that. There's technical details to this that I'm not really uh, totally informed about. So I'm not going to like make any statements here or there about it, but I've always done with merging cells, never had any problems. But it turns out if you do that, uh, you have problems with BCOM 3.0 just because of some uh, bug in Delta plugin that will basically cause, you know, houses to disappear. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you, Sector. I mean, uh, supposedly it's something that the engine just kind of does automatically. Um, that is merging cell records, you know, on its own. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm again, I'm not sure. But so I had a conversation with Benjamin on Matrix. Uh, I let him know the exact kind of. Oh man, my potato is really struggling here. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Maybe this is, yeah, we can do this. Um, had a chat with Benjamin on Matrix about the whole situation, and it's easily narrowed down to just the main BCOM plugin and the Waterworks plugin and Vanilla Morrowind. Delta merge those. You can see the problem pretty clearly. Um, so there's an exact small test case. Um, I let Benjamin know about it, but you can see these houses right here. Maybe a couple other ones. They just are gone. And um, it just has something to do with weird, like, references and, and the way the engine handles them. And then Delta Plugin does, sees it in a weird way. Um, the very first thing Benjamin asked, actually, um, well, so actually it's funny um, you say that because Benjamin actually asked, does the Waterworks plugin list BCOM as a master? And it does not. And I think a Delta Plugin makes some assumptions about plugins affecting other plugins actually explicitly listing the plugins they affect as a master very interesting i always I always wondered about how it does it does that because when you open it in the cs you can see like for example in saint anine you can see the bcom lighthouse and then the old one is still there it's not like um deactivated or anything but you know i'm also a very caveman compared to rp on these things so that, in a nutshell, is it, though. Delta Plugin makes some assumptions about plugins affecting others, expli explicitly listing masters. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in any case, though, um, we've chatted about it on Matrix. Benjamin is aware of how to recreate the issue and stuff, and for now, we can mitigate it by simply not having Delta Plugin merge cells. Um, it's Again, it's not 100% clear what exactly it does but nonetheless <clears throat> excuse me so yeah um moving on though you also mentioned mlox and i guess ferris <clears throat> apparently is looking into uh, porting mlox which is really great um 
it's actually a twofold problem porting mlocks because we need to port it to support OpenNW files. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. Thank you, Gonzo. Yes, detail devil. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what I've done in several of my mods um, to avoid deleting or, um, for example, my BCOM ghost gate distant uh, details plugin. I actually had to use editor marker instead of a delete because it would cause, you know, <laughs> OMW locks. Yeah, okay, OM locks. So <sighs> we're kind of all over the place right now to, uh, you know, merging discussions here, but M lock. So we have one problem here. We have to port, port the, uh... yeah, okay, interesting. I didn't see any issues, actually. I've been playing with his BCOM Plus, and I don't see any issues. So, <laughs> um, locks. Yeah, ooh, I'm a little hungry now. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Um, pretty much done, huh? So, okay, so then he's done that. That's great. Um, but we also need the community rule maintainers to um, include OpenMW plugins. And I don't know what the status on that. I don't know what the status is on that, um, but that's great. Um, Delta BCM. Okay, so the, uh, to clarify Detail Devil, we're talking about there is an issue with... Um, There's an issue with merging cells via Delta plugin and the latest version of Beautiful Cities of Morrowind, specifically when you include the Waterworks plugin. There's like some shenanigans that cause buildings to um, to vanish, and uh, it's a it's a strange detail that I don't understand completely, uh, because again there is some information about the engines, in particular OpenMW and Morrowind.exe, doing some merging of cells uh, when it loads the game. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at with that. Weird stuff. We simply avoid it by not, you know. We just tell Delta plugin, don't do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's great. Um, do you know, Sector, if it works on uh, Linux? Like, is it the same situation where I can just run the Python script? Um, if so, that's really great. And if we have this... This would be the remaining thing uh, that we would need, you know, is for the um, works rate. Excellent. That's wonderful. Um, point me to a repo. I want to try it. I do want to mention that. Uh, okay. Standalone binary. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say those don't work at all. <laughs> and they never worked for me. Um, I would definitely recommend um, to just try, try to use the Python script, but. It would be nice to have a headless way of using it. Um, I do want to say that uh, I have some plans for my own approach to this, um, but I'm not quite there yet. But we will see something kind of similar to what uh, Ferris has done above uh, involving the website. Um, but yeah, moving on. 6.0 mod list um, that I came up with. Actually, I was inspired by a conversation that I had with Herdrax and Gonzo, um, both the conversation with them, um, but also playing Morrowind via OpenMW on my Steam Deck inspired me to kind of come up with a, with a setup that is going to perform good no matter what. Um, and I didn't want to do any graphics replacers or maybe just a few very select ones. Um, and select gameplay mods that I enjoy. So like natural character growth and decay, magicka based skill progression, and a few others, um, and lots of shaders and um, improved lighting for all shaders and things like that. Um, not going for the graphics over, uh, overhaul, but we want good performance and a good look. Um, and so, yeah, the end result is something like I Heart Vanilla is like, you know, you could reasonably play that as your first approach to Morrowind, right? Because it's, it is vanilla, but you have a few things in here. Uh, you have Met, 
which is basically upscaling the whole game's worth of textures, and that's going to have a performance cost. Um, shoot, I didn't even add this one. I think it could reasonably go on my uh, Just Good Morrowind mod or Weapon Sheathing. No, I have Weapon Sheathing. <sighs> Never mind. Um, but unlike I Heart Vanilla, which really sticks true to vanilla gameplay and everything, all the all the Toddisms in their glory, um, the Just Good Morrowind list doesn't shy away from you know fixing things like leveling or magic of progression or anything else like that. Um, but I don't go too far out of my way to fix all the Toddisms I left. Um, the expansions unintegrated. So the first time you sleep, you're going to get <laughs> attacked by the uh, the assassins and you're going to hear about soul slime in the first 20 minutes of your gameplay and all that stuff. Um, I don't go that far because like you can easily go off the deep end. Um, let's just take a quick look at what I have here. Um, yeah, so I nuked some stuff. This is basically the exp uh, I Heart Vanilla section. I nuked some stuff out of there, and then I include, yeah, Speechcraft Rebalance, Pickpocket Rebalance, Combat Pack. Um, I'm actually really liking the combination of cho Chocolate UI and the Skyrim HUD for OpenMW. I actually think this is my favorite, my new favorite HUD, and we'll look at it in just a second. Improved lights for all shaders, skies, Sophia's uh, excellent blue skies, and the intent is to make... Uh, <laughs> the intent is to make the game beautiful, but in really subtle ways, like letting the shaders take over. So I guess I'll just stop talking about it and I'll show you. Mm. Give me that HUD. And uh, it's been fun. Also, to play just plain old Morrowind again, just good Morrowind, you know, um, without fixing the economy, without fixing all kinds of other things, you know. It's actually just really fun to just play. Okay, let's... Let's make myself reasonably paced here. And it's not going to be, you know, I'm streaming, so I'm losing some performance to that. Uh, but on my Steam Deck... With this exact setup, I'm getting a solid 30 frames per second everywhere, silky smooth. I dropped to about 27 in Balmora, but that's it. And it's really great. And as you can see, I added ground cover. I've got mop. I've got post-processing. And at nighttime, I got really nice looking night skies. But that's really it. Yes, it does. Yes, it sure does. Let's uh, witness this. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's been... Whoops. <laughs> Yikes, don't try this at home. It's been really fun just playing janky old Morrowind, right? I was really tempted. There you go. There you go right there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, I, I hear you about the bars, honestly. Um, I could see not loving them. I, I like them. I really enjoy them. One change I do want to make, which is a patch to Sotha's, is to move that sneak boost bar. Um, I just am not 100% sure where I would move it to. Um, I feel like it needs to be by fatigue or... The problem is, like, as you can see, I got the little sneak eye in the middle there. I'm not going to put the bar in the middle. That would be terrible. So it's like, where should I put it? I don't really now but I do want to move it because it just doesn't fit right there um that would be something in my MOMW gameplay maybe I'll send Sotha a patch uh to make that you know adjustable with the interface or something but yeah anyway just good Morrowind again the intention is you know there's no Tamara we built here there's um I have the Bethesda add-ons but honestly I might junk those out um but the intent is just good Morrowind including Tribunal and Blood Moon and The expansion resource conflicts fi fixes, of course. Um, we'll go over here to Sage with Mora. And yeah, just everywhere I go, again, you know, I'm streaming to y'all right now, so losing some frames there to my Intel Potato GPU. <sighs> but on my Steam Deck, yeah, just silky smooth everywhere. It's totally beautiful. And um, and you can see here we got the, the appropriately textured walkway there. Um, and just, you know, excellent touches, right? Like... With just, so what you're seeing here is the vanilla textures, Morrowind optimization patch, and then the normal maps for everything pack for the vanilla textures. 
It's kind of janky sometimes to see the vanilla textures and all their blurry glory with normal maps, but honestly, I mean, you can even see it right here with these men here. Like, that's a really blurry texture, but the normal maps, I don't know. They don't make it worse at all. It actually is... You can kind of see at the top there, the normals doing their thing, right? Um, I don't know. It works, and it's kind of a cool package. Um, yeah, the clouds. And then the clouds, right? So, again, letting the shaders take over and kind of do the thing to make the game beautiful. You know, you don't mind the, the janky 21-year-old... <laughs> 2001 textures that are at least mopified, you know, because um, you just have beauty all around you, right? Like, oh, man, that texture sucks, but oh, wow, yeah, sweet, okay. <laughs> Sky blending going on, yep. Yep, exactly. Um, and big props to Sophia for the clear blue skies patch. Really, really, <laughs> all right, Santa. <laughs> really makes the look possible, though, uh, having the clear blue skies. Um so yeah, just good Morrowind. I'm really looking forward to sharing this with everybody and getting feedback about it. Um, and uh, I'm currently enjoying it a lot myself. Again, on my Steam Deck. So um, yeah, thank you for this little sneak peek at it. Let's hop on over here back to the list. Okay, yeah. So I guess we might as well actually get some stuff done <laughs> at some point. Um, so... Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, I did a very bad thing. And I reintroduced some hacks back into the code base. <sighs> yeah, okay. So we had a we had an issue that Shinino actually pointed out on Discord where uh settings tweak mods. So for example, something like one of these. Where are they at? Here we go. Had a folder path. And, I mean, it doesn't make sense for your settings value to have a folder path, really. Um, it was just a bug that I didn't anticipate. But, unfortunately, just call me Todd. I worked around it in a very hideous way that I that is bad. And I should feel bad for doing it. And, and that's this right here. If the category is settings tweaks, don't do it. Yeah, that's bad. I should feel bad. Really, what we should do is we should do the right thing in the template, right? Like, if there's no uh, database path for something, um, so first off, let's verify that, we shouldn't show it. We shouldn't have to have some crazy hacks. That was the whole point of 5.10, remove the hacks. So let's look and see, first off, path order. do we have actually a data path for distant land and objects? No, Todd, we do not. It's not there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo my evil hacks. We're just going to go ahead and... Yeah. I don't trust Emacs to indent it right. Don't judge. So I forget how this used to look before I hacked it up. Let's let's actually not trust my memory. Mm. Let's look at the merge request. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> This is the list of issues that mostly Gonzo... By the way, that's actually something I wanted to point out here. Dr. Gonzo over here. Let's just take a look at this. This, my friends, is the list of changes to the website since we launched 5.10. And if you'll note on the side here, we just got Gonzo tearing up a storm. There's little old me with a few things here and there. Breaking the website with hacks. Where is it? All uh, right. No, right here, yeah. But yeah, props to Gonzo. Major thanks um, for jumping on this and and making all these changes. It's excellent. Um, so we want to we want to look at the version of the code on this commit before I junked everything up. Come on, GitLab. 
How can I see the... <sighs> How can I see the file? There we go. <sighs> Alright. Now before I fixed everything, what did it look like? What's that line? 538. Mm, yeah, okay. Just gonna do the old copy pasta. We'll unhack it. And we'll fix it the right way. And shame on me. <laughs> All right. And then several problems should just fix themselves just by doing it the right way. I love it when it works out like that. There we go. Custom path persisted from last week. I love it. Except it shouldn't be there. Whew. All right. Um, so it thinks it has something, but why? What are we looking at here? List detail, right? Okay. First off. Just give me the raw details, Python, please. Okay. Oh, yeah, so here's the problem right here. If I just delete this, let's just try it. Yeah, good. Huh, there we go. What happened, Johnny? What did you do? Oh, thank you for asking. Well, actually, uh, it turns out <laughs> I had this erroneous elif branch here. Um, not that one. Where'd you go? This one. Okay, so the code was saying, if DB paths, DB paths, you can see right above here, we're looking into the database. We now keep data paths as a record in the database. That's how we're able to know you need this one for that list and that one for that list. Getting it out of the database. And if, if DB paths, this is true, if there's something in the database else, not true, if there's nothing in the database, which is, you know, we're just making something up here. <laughs> so we just fixed the problem simply by deleting it. Hooray. So let's try and look at, um, I don't know, a couple other of these. Yeah. Neat. Gonzo, can you think of another, uh, please, Dr. Gonzo, what's another, uh, what was the one Shanino brought up? Um, I think it was a settings one, but isn't there a non-settings one? That kind of spurred this whole we need to do it without hacks discussion. <laughs> Let me know if you think of that. Um, cool. I think that we just fixed it all, though. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyways, we fixed it by deleting some bad code. Hooray. Good job. Cool. That actually was easier than I expected. <laughs> so let's move on to the next thing, huh? Oh, yeah, the checkbox thing. This is really exciting, and I'm very pumped to look at this today with you all. Undo the hacks. Yeah. All right. So this idea, let's see. Let's see if this person wanted to be anonymous or not, or I will read their email to me. To you folks right now. Um, is anonymous false? Is public false? Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and err on the side of caution there. And not publicly 
disclose them, but suffice to say, they mentioned that this whole thing that we got going on here, so let's take a look at the website. If I click, uh, you know, I heart vanilla. This whole thing we got going on here with this multiple select form, that's what this business is right here. This is not very user-friendly, honestly, and it's not. <laughs> when I was re-implementing this on the new CFG generator, I definitely wondered to myself, like, Ugh, like, is this useful? Are people going to, you know, are people going to use this? I would argue there is some utility here, right? Like, it's really cool to come down here, right? You, you got the total overhaul preset and all the total overhaul mods are pre-selected and you can just hold shift click and unselect things. I mean, that is useful, but the multi-select form user experience is, you know, it's Quama cuddle. <laughs> um, it's garbage. And I had some good feedback from this user about having like maybe some checkboxes, right? So you got the preset of mods on the list in order with checkboxes next to them. And somebody might be able to go through and say, okay, well, I did like two thirds of total overhaul. Give me the config for that and uncheck the ones that I didn't do. And I thought that was a really cool idea. So we're going to implement it uh, right now. Sounds good. All right. Uh, forms is the new home. Oh, oh yeah, Gonzo. It also occurred to me. We have. Uh, oh no. Yeah, we still have this file kicking around. CFG .pile, pi. Ugh. Um, I suspect that we can. Uh, thank you, Sophia. That's good feedback. I appreciate it. Um, we could probably delete this though. Um, I don't think any of these functions are being used. Generate CFG certainly is no longer being used. Um, I think get visitor OS is used. We could just put that in another file. But um, you want to make a ticket for that? Appreciate it, my friend. All right. So with Django, actually, it has yeah, cool. Um, uh, sure, uh, Gonzo. <laughs> um, we want to uh delete the cfg.py file uh, that's here, still kicking around with all the old CFG generator code, doing nothing. Actually, it looks like my editor is complaining about the fact that they do nothing, among other things. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll just delete this file, and then we need to find a new home for get visitor OS function, because we're still using that here or there. Righto. Um... So Django allows you to implement forms using a class. Kind of like with the database models. And uh, yeah, here we go. What's cool about it is, thank you so much, Gonzo. Appreciate that. Just got the email. Dr. Gonzo is on it. But what you can do here is you can make a class, you can inherit from their form class, much in the same way that we do for our database models here. We inherit from models model to create the mod and everything else we stuff into the database. And um, it gives you a little bit of functionality for free. I don't use all of the form framework functionality, like it will um, render HTML for you for the form, but it's like kind of a pain to style that stuff. You have to style it with Python and I just will write out the HTML ourselves. But I will use the, um, I will use the form for sanitization purposes. And what I mean by that is in the, whoop, in the CFG generator code. No, 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 no. Here we go. No, 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 geez. We can do something like this and it will be able to tell us like this if the form is good or not. Santaization, exactly. Thank you so much, Gonzo. Awesome. Let's see, so we want true nights and darkness. Let's pull that up on my local WTF edition of the website. Nights. All right. Would you look at that? Oh, well. Yeah, it does have a, actually have a data path. Um, I suppose we could just delete this data path, right? It's gone. Good 
Good call out. Um, okay. So, I think I can honestly use... Whoa, 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 whoa. Typo city over here. I think I could just reuse... Oh, no, no, no. Okay. It's a model multiple choice field. So we'll make we'll make another one. No big deal. CFG generator edit preset form. I think it's a okay name. I guess. Edit preset mods. If I was thinking back in the day, I would have called that mods. Uh, no, I don't think so. That's a great call out, Sophia. Actually, I have tried to do that. So check this out. I have tried to do that, but it does. Um, oh, no, no. I haven't done that with mods. Yeah, good call out because I do that with um, mod lists. So, for example, if you look on here, there's known issues, and it will open GitLab with the total overhaul tag. So the caveat for this is it requires us to actually tag mods with total overhaul. But yeah, we could totally do that. That's a really great idea. We would have to tag mods in GitLab with like the mod title. Um, and then we can make a button just like that that somebody could click, which would take them to this link um, uh, to see issues with the mod. No, that's a great idea. Uh, absolutely. Uh, please feel free to open an issue and we'll do that. Because um, it's... It should be there so much that I thought we were already doing it, and we're not. <laughs> yeah, cool. I would love it, too. That's a good call-out. All right. Because, yeah, we're already doing it for mod lists. Only makes sense. I think I just was lazy and didn't do it for mods. <laughs> All right. Um, this should be defolderified by now. Cool. All right. Uh... Excellent. Hmm, I want a checkbox select multiple maybe. We're going to have to read the manual. Read the friendly manual. Django forms. Please. We're not exactly using Django 4.2. Uh, we're using... We're a little behind. Django 3.2. Yikes. We should probably update Django some, sometime soon. The fabulous manual. There you go. I like that. No need to drop the F-bombs. All right. Let's see here. Form classes is what I... I don't need to... Model form, right? Hmm. I wonder why not that. Interesting. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. We want to use just a regular form, and then we're going to give it... We're using the model multiple choice field, and we're giving it a specific query set. I gotcha. Ooh. Sector. Nice. Checkbox select multiple, but I think we need the... can tell it's been a long time since I've done this. Form fields, here we go. Here we go. Wait, yeah, okay. No. Thank you, Sophia, I just saw the issue pop up. Appreciate that. Here we go. 
plain old forms. Here we go. Check the box. Oh, no, we don't want that drop down box. Oof. No good. Well, maybe I will have to use a model form. Seems seems like overkill, if I'm being honest. Yeah, because we don't need access to the model. We just need it to be a choice. Yeah, I'm not even really going to use this. I just need this for the Python, really. I'm not going to use the widget. Lots of action on GitLab today. I love it. Yeah, it's just a widget. Choice field. Model multiple choice. Okay. We can just re copy pasta this. And it is agnostic to the kind of widget we use. Um. Let's see if that works. I actually do not know. Whoa. Alright. So the idea is to parameterize the query set. Could work. Uh, give me the name. All right. So let's do edit pre set. Form. It's a mouthful. Give it the get parameters. Come on, you can do it. Maybe not. <laughs> Way down here, are we? Yeah, we're not using those. Okay. That's fine. Here's the form, mod select, okay. We're just gonna do another one, actually above this one. Action. So, uh, to kind of, if you're not familiar with the semantics of HTML forms, which are actually kind of confusing, I'll explain what I'm doing here. So you can see this element right here is a functioning form, and that is what we have 
down here with the multiple select thing. And the idea of forms in HTML, <laughs> yeah, I know. Makes me cry too, don't worry. <laughs> this whole thing makes me cry. But basically a form is an element that <clears throat> the intent is you're sending data around, right? So what we're doing here is we have a form with a name. The action is a weird way of saying the page that the form is doing the thing on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the method is another HTML implementation detail. We're doing get, which means that there's going to be things after the URL. If you're logging into a website, let's say you're logging into Nexus Mods or GitLab, and you type your username and your password in, they are doing a post because you don't want, among other things that are a problem, you don't want your password to be in the URL that you're sending over to the server, um, so on. And then you got different elements here that are related to the form, a label, select. Select specifically is what gives us this little form here. Checkbox, I believe, is a type of input. Let's ask MDN. Yeah, it is a type of input. Here you go. So it's gonna look pretty similar. Um, I'm not gonna do, so this is some interesting semantic syntax here with field set and legend. Um, things like this are really great for uh, visually impaired folks who use a screen, screen reader. So the screen reader can actually say, like it can know semantically what the content is. Um, and that's why you would do things like this. Um, and we should try to be thoughtful and use these semantics too, where it makes sense. For now though, it doesn't make sense. We just want an input box that looks kind of like that. Um, all right, easy enough, right? So we're gonna do the action on this page. Some web developers may choose to have like a different endpoint to do their work, you know, for the CFG generator, it just kind of makes sense. Um, maybe somebody could argue for having a different action target. I would listen to that argument. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. I'm just making this up as I go along, folks. All right, uh, so this is four, okay. Preset edit. Oop. To do preset edit form. Let's see what we got. Oop. Oh my. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I was being too clever for myself. Why you know like that? I'm just giving it a, oh, okay, I see. It's a class, not a, all right. For the sake of expediency right now, I'm gonna make a total overhaul specific class here. And then we can work out the details later on on how to modify the init properly of this class without disrupting the Django order of things. And just taking a step back. Interesting. What? Wait a minute. What? Oh, right. I changed the name just now. Just now. There we go. And we have a website again. Okay. Ooh, there we go. Hey, all right. It's something. Okay. Um. 
What am I doing here? What's this div here? Oh, it's a the submit button. We need one of those. Probably need to draw a line to Well, Santa, if I may just take a moment to make a recommendation to you. All in with Gao? Bro, that's intense. Giving you whiplash. Is it too loud, by the way? I don't want it to be super loud. Um, here we go. Okay, yeah. Antimonia. I highly recommend. If you're going to do... Okay, okay. It's a good... Okay, good, good. Yeah, I just want to be a little chill background. You can barely hear it, but it's there. Um... Santa, any of you, if you like Final Fantasy 3, you have got to try this hack, okay? Um, it's, in my opinion, probably the most tasteful hack that introduces General Leo as a playable character. But also the, the story liberties that it takes are pretty good. Um, if you're going to do an FF6 run, I see no reason to not do this one. So yeah, do that. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, where's my line? There it is. All right. There will be more stuff here soon. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. I may be doing double work. by giving the query set to the form and then doing it again. Uh, note for myself. All right. Um, so going back to my form, we're giving it the query set there, right? Okay. Whoop. Nothing by default. That way it doesn't blow up when we try to... Because if we did, for example, a Starwind preset, it would blow up because it would be like, oh my god, what are you giving me? Um, I'm going to call it the uh, edit preset. Edit preset form and what I'm about to do may carry into this to do message I left for myself cutting down on the database queries which if you're curious the date when I say database queries I mean how much we're hitting the database and as you can see just loading this page one query not too bad right but then I click total overhaul Oops. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go. I click total overhaul. <laughs> <clears throat> and then magically. Magically. You may already have a guess about what's going to happen here. I'm starting to guess it's going to be another error. <laughs> this should take this long. Woo, okay, it worked. But magically, we are up to 1,121 queries. Yeah, that's a lot more than a handful. Um, and frankly, a lot of these are redundant. 
and could be improved upon. Um, yeah, like some of these, like, 537 duplicated, you know, just... This could be improved by somebody who knows a crap ton more about database queries than me. For now, I work around it with a server that's set up pretty well. Um, but that's why it takes forever here. Come back down here now. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a preset that loads a little more quickly. All right. Oof. And what did I... Are you guys... Santa, are you talking about Necroslayer? Billy's game? Oh, 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 right. Sorry, I'm a dingus. Yeah, you got to put Antimonia. I mean, you just got to. It's. I'll be honest, I didn't mess with the Colosseum at all when on my playthrough. Um, I just never got there. Okay, cool, cool. I heard... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Santa. I heard that Rev uh, Remnant 2 was pretty good. I still haven't actually played uh, Baldur's Gate 3, so. All right, well, I did a goof here. Sheesh. We're just going to heart vanilla. The last spell, okay. Yeah, um, I have cross code that I started too. I gotta, it's on the Steam Deck. I gotta really fire that up. <clears throat> it was fun though. I dug it. I don't know why I, I was a fool for waiting on it. There we go. That's, but that's not what I wanted at all. Oh dear God, what the? Oh my God, that's terrible. Yeah, actually, I never played uh. Any of the original Baldur's Gates all the way through. I would love to do that at some point in my copious amount of free time that I have. <laughs> oh, speaking of free times, too. Sophia, if you feel like it, definitely make an issue about the fabulous Halalo Manor extra plugins. Because I will forget if we don't have an issue for it. So feel free to go open that. Um, but I didn't forget that you asked about it. Mm, okay. That's, so that's not at all what I want. This is terrible, actually. I don't even know what it gave me here. Uh, is it? I'm morbidly curious. That's why we're looking at page source here. Thank you, Sophia. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, it just gave me a crappy select form. That's not what I wanted. So maybe I do need to tell it the widget that I want. Okay, back we go to the forms code. Does it have a... Hopefully we can even style the widget on this. Otherwise, I'm just not going to bother. Huh, I'm not the only one, apparently. Uh, I probably won't bother with form fields uh, classes, to be honest with you. We don't have a need for security. You know, if I was doing like a login, then I would really want to make sure to do that. Thank you so much for filing that issue. Um, we don't really care about, you know, this CFG generator. There's no way you can get yourself hacked. <sighs> interesting. That's a really interesting take. That's how I feel about... Uh, Honestly, Elder Scrolls games, to be honest with you. Okay, that's not what I want. I don't want to form from a model either.
Will it land? Way too many tabs open right now. Holy moly. Alright. Hey! Alright. Look at that. I'm gonna drop my dust down. Icewind Dale. Oh my gosh, awesome. I have that one too. I actually have all the old um I don't even know what you call that engine. Aurora engine. Which reminds me. Let's take a moment to plug Gem RB. You guys all know about Gem RB. Infinity engine. Okay. You guys know about Gem RB, right? Right? All right. Ooh. Well, if you couldn't already tell by reading the page here, Gem RB is effectively Aurora. Okay, yeah, yeah, I knew. Okay, uh, Kotor, right? On that one. If you couldn't tell already, though, by looking at this page, Gem RB is to Infinity Engine games as OpenMW is to, you know, Gamebryo Netimers engine games. Um, so yeah, just a quick plug to this project. I Last time I tried to play Baldur's Gate, I was using um, GemRB. I was trying to make my own Debian deb package back when I used Debian. This was like a long time ago. Uh, and it's a, it's a cool project, you know. Um, you can see here they've got a, like a matrix of uh, compatibility. Um... That's pretty cool, though. Last time I checked, PST was not even, like, completable with it, so that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I have Tyranny um, of that series. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to go for Tyranny, um, and I started that one, and man, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I really like the soundtrack on Tyranny. It's pretty awesome. I listened to the soundtrack more than I played the game. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, wow, look at this. Not in order, though. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually playing it. I really want to play it on my Steam Deck, but I don't know what the gamepad support is like on it. I'm just spoiled by that thing. Don't hate me. Yeah, right? <laughs> Santa and I, we talk games all the time. Um, This query set is wrong. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, see, I was a little torn between Pillars or Tyranny, and I think I had just gotten done doing a New Vegas run where I was playing the Legion, so I was feeling, like, evil, you know? So I was like, Tyranny it is. <laughs> I just did a Legion run. All right. Let's duck out of here. We need to jump into the shell. Because this query is bunk. Whoa, whoa, okay. Yeah, that's, what is that? Let's look at iHeart Vanilla real quick. Yeah, what's going on here? What I think we need Yeah, that's what we need. Listed mod. All right. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Little buddy mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that, Smalio. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Sector and I were talking of, about kind of like a 2P mode. Um, well, it started as like an idea to have a little buddy mode for TES3MP, but then it kind of evolved into like if you ever played Mario Galaxy for Nintendo Wii, there was the 2P mode where somebody could hold a second remote and kind of like shoot things on the screen. They weren't actually playing, but they were helping in a small way. And I feel like Morrowind 
it would be really fun to have something, right? Like where somebody's sitting on the couch with you, like maybe who's not like the biggest Morrowind geek ever, but they want to play along like me and Smalio sometimes. And to have, you know, her be like my P2. And she's like, you know, shooting spitwads at Fargoth or something. I don't know. But yeah, that's a, just an idea at this point. Yeah, exactly, Gonzo. Yeah. Uh, but no, Smalio, we haven't really, um, you know, worked on it too much. Just brainstorming, spitballing ideas uh, between Sector and I. All right. What's going on? We need... Listed mod. What is listed mod, Johnny? I don't understand. What is a mod and a listed mod? Well, thank you for asking. In our database, we have mods. Pretty straightforward, right? You look at them all day. What is a listed mod is how we store a relationship between a mod and a mod list in the database. And this is where we preserve the ordering of mods and mod lists. We use this special uh, class that is designed completely just to hold information about the relationship. Um, I don't really know what this pattern is called, but it is a pattern. Um, I learned it from some Django books over the years. And yeah, so we have listed mod and sublist is also much the same. Um, ooh, okay. Sort of a version of little bunny mode. I'm interested in this. What you got? Ooh, cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. So, yes, yeah, Malia, this is kind of like that. Um, when you die. Yeah, exactly. When you die, you get to be like the thing that runs around and, and bops people or blows them up. Yeah, this is a cool idea. Um, looking forward to trying this once we actually get into doing some multiplayer around here. All right, going back to the page. So we need the listed mod. There we go. sense okay we need two field name mod yeah it is cool being smallio when we get up multiplayer going up in here we will try that i'm just guessing here with this i have no idea if that's actually going to work Um, and if it does work, it might give us a little neat something for free. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Um, wow, what's this? Why does it say this? So each database model that we have has a method like this one. This is sort of like a, a Python-ism where your classes have various... When you see something like this with the two underscores on either side, these are like class methods. Uh implementation details for the class as it were what the heck is this <sighs> don't try this at home man i'm typoing up everywhere today um but in any in any case when you're implementing a database model when you implement the string method that's what this is that is what you get when you just plop the class on a page and so for listed mod you can see right here we got the list title we got the list number uh, yeah, whoops. No, that was just straight up typo on my part. I'm fat fingering. I had I, probably too much coffee today. Um, and then the mod here. So um, I don't know if it's actually desirable to have this, though. Um, and in any case, I don't think we're going to... So right now, a little bit of why Django is so awesome. The code for this, by the way, is just straight up this. This is it folks all of this this whole form right here all comes from just that and that's part of the magic of django forms api is you give it like some high level details about what you want and then boom it gives you the form um i don't 
know if we're gonna I mean this is very nice frankly <laughs> to have this instead of a bunch of HTML I just uh, don't know how we select them <laughs> nice. Seems like an interesting experience. I li also like the Black Mage's cover of this tune. Pretty solid. All right, well, so let's go back here to our friend, the fabulous documents. How do I tell it to make a widget checked? Because that's what I want here, right? I want, when you're selecting a preset, these should be checked. And the whole idea is like, oh, I didn't make it through iHeart Vanilla. I don't want all of them. Like You can uncheck that. I didn't want Distant Sea Floor. I'll uncheck that. Click Submit. Probably move the button. Where Where did it go? Oh, I commented it out. I'll have to re-add that. Um, but yeah, and then you would get your customized version of the mod list. Um which I think would be pretty cool to let folks do that. It was a great idea. I love getting ideas from people like that. It's I feel like I'm a dumb dumb for not thinking of it myself. But I did wonder, like I said, when I implemented that, I'm like, isn't there a better way? There is a better way. Okay, back to the documents. Checkbox select multiple. Is there maybe just a checkbox class I can read about? Check test. Yes, that is the intention sector. Thank you. That is the intention. And it looks like I got this check test field, a, a callable that takes the value of the checkbox input and returns true. So like, uh, it should be just true. I should be just return true, a lambda that returns true, right? Let's see. Will it blend? No, it will not. Boop. Uh. Okay. I just want the real Python documents. Thank you. Mm. Is true an expression? <laughs> uh, oh, really? Oh, okay, well true is an expression. But check test, not a valid field. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to roll my own form, unfortunately. Drat. what I want. All right. Drat. Let's 
So it's what's nice about these kinds of things. And also what's a little not nice is, yeah, now I want to tweak it just a little bit and I'm bumping into I can't. And I, it, I go from getting the entire form for free to I have to roll it all by myself is what it is. <clears throat> all right. Well, so I can get the page back at least. Come on now. Or did I break it completely? Hmm. Okie doke. Yeah, I don't know. There's something in... the widget implementation if I really wanted to go down that hole. Uh, Medium.com, I know. What are you... Oh, already punishing me for even using the website. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they have to... Custom iterator class. All right, yeah. At this point, at this point, you're fighting against abstraction here. It's like I w just will write HTML instead of a bunch of Python to write the HTML for me. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it just sucks to have this database query going on, which we just might not even do it anyway. Um, it's gone. That's gone. Also gone. Well, then how can we get the parameters, Johnny? Easy. Um, we'll do it ourselves. We can look at... Excuse me. You can look at this. And um, there's basically a dictionary that you can look at. And we will look for the parameter mods. And mods will have, uh, you know, names or slugs or something. And we can query the database with that. So let's get rid of that. We don't care anymore about giving the prefab form because it's doing it wrong anyways. Yes, we can. All right, back down to here. We had a little bit of fun pretending like we weren't going to have to write HTML, but as it turns out, we do. We do. Okay. Back to the ugliness of... Whoa! I forgot to erase... All right, back to nothing. Yes. Uh, okay. Mm. Plain old line, please. Um, so am I actually, am I getting the, the data that I need? I am, let's see here. Da -da. Used mods, there we go. label and an input for each one. Okay. Give me that input. 
type check box ID mod slug which is guaranteed to be unique across all mods it needs to be unique because that's how we one of the ways we can visit a mod via the URL so we can use it as an ID safely because it's unique and human readable versus a number like the primary key I'm gonna give it the name it is gonna be the slug 2 for now at least up. Right? No, I need a slash. Cool. Okay, now our label, right? Label for for No, 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 no. Is it gonna just work? <sighs> okay. I mean, want them on the same line, but that's pretty good. Um, I'm actually curious now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right? So, like, then in theory, right, I don't want containers animated. I just click submit or whatever. Submit should go at the bottom. Where did I? Yeah. All right, folks. I actually have to run AFK for just a minute. I will be back. I apologize, but I'm going to have you stare at the Todd... Todd's creation while I'm gone. I'm back. Oh, nice. Very cool detail, Devil. I'm totally looking forward to all the new stuff you got coming up. Very much looking forward to it. It's like the most exciting treatment Sagerth Mora has seen in quite some time, really. It's it's awesome. I'm checking that idea off. Because we got it basically there. And I want to jump ahead to this one. Um, it's another suggestion from Shinino, our friend on Discord. And basically the situation is this. Um, as of the 5.10 version of the website, we have a new feature. Where when you look at a mod, the information you're shown on the page is different. Depending on if you're just looking at the mod on its own. For example, right here. Or if you're looking at it on a mod list. Well, Johnny, how do you tell if it's on a mod list? Well, it's not easy right now. You have to know to look at the URL right up here and to notice, oh, lists iHeart Vanilla number one compared to this page. Mods, patch for purist. 
And then you have to know kind of like, you know, what's in mine and Gonzo and Herdrex's brain about the website. And, uh, you know, we can do better. And so what I was thinking is we can say a little message right here under where it says usage info. And we can say, hey, you know, um, yeah, that is true. That is true. I think I feel like, though, it would go a long way to just say something right here on mods that are in a mod list. Um, just to say, hey, by the way, this page does not reflect usage on a particular list. Refer to the links above. Something like that. Let's see what we can do. All right. Uh, sorry, usage info. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, I guess. So... Fear not, I will probably finish this feature some point today or maybe tomorrow even. Um, tomorrow on the stream, I do want to take another look at RoboWind. We're going to play the newest version of the demo, and we're going to get through it maybe a little more quickly this time. Um, but yeah, I did want to go ahead and cover that again. But uh, maybe we'll finish this feature up, or maybe we'll just do strictly gameplay tomorrow. Um, but in any case, this is not going away. Don't fret. We're just jumping ahead a little bit for now. Oh. Okay. Good. And so what I'm looking for here is we have this little featured in mod lists page. So featured. Ooh, yeah, detail devil. I just saw what you wrote about they would use their slaves for entertainment. Yeah, I mean, probably. Probably. I mean, Therana has her slave, you know, trying on her clothes for her. So that's like in a mad way. That's entertainment. All right. Uh, so this is how I am, on one hand, detecting if we're in a mod list. And then a, just a couple of lines below, <sighs> we're detecting it this way. Okay. Um... Hello, Todd. Okay. We're going to center this. We're going to make it bold, too. Good. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I see the difference now of this versus this. It occurs to me now. This is to signal that we are on the mod list page. This is to know if it actually is independent of the page on a mod list. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. So we'll see it, of course, on Patch for Purist, but... And count. And not mod list. Good, and then if we go back to here, good, all right. Ooh, okay, hmm, yeah, I don't know. That could be an interesting quest, though, too, right, to, like, manage that situation, cause a fight, encourage it, or kind of, like, try to defuse it, you know, or something. All right, well, this is doing what I wanted to do. I'm very happy. Uh, with a little bit of code, we're able to tell people what. How about this? Let's see how that looks. Probably needs to be bigger, you think? Like maybe a level three or four heading, maybe? Probably not bigger than this heading. So four, that's a four. Maybe we'll make it a five. Uh. Hmm.
you are looking at details for this mod that are not specific to any particular mod list to get list specific. Don't try that at home. To get list specific usage information, please click one of the links above where it says featured in mod lists. Too much? No good? I think it's pretty good. And then again, if we, uh, so if we, here's our friendly little warning. Not here, because it doesn't need to be. I think that's pretty good. And then that way, if you've unsuspectingly, so Shanino mentioned he was patch for purist, you know, using the search box, which is good. We want you to use the search box, but when you come here, it takes you to this list independent page. Um, and now we got the warning on here, though. So I'll have to have Shinino check that out, see if it works, um, and hopefully it can help people figure out how to get to what they need to see. This whole system we made of contextually showing the right information isn't any good if people don't know how to, you know, tell when they're not using it. Cool. Okay. Well, I like that. I'm going with this. Nobody has any comments. We're going with it. All right. Uh, not that. Not that. This. Here we go. Let's go back to here. So I was really curious because you might remember a minute ago, back when we were still entertaining the idea of a prefabbed class for the form, they had their checkboxes lined up with the title. And I want to know how they did that. Because I want to do that too. So let's take a look. Let's re-implement that form class. Let's reuse it in our code up here. Yeah, okay. It'll be fine, right? Some of them would probably, honestly, again, like Therana, for example, a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, see? Okay. What'd they do? Oh my. <sighs> okay. Just unordered list. Straight up, put them right next to each other. Let's try it. Strange, I would not have thought to do this. If it works, I'll be happy and a little puzzled. Hmm. I don't like that. What am I 
I missing here? They have a. Oh yeah, it is on that. Okay, it is in an unordered list. That's fine. What gives? Wait a minute. Was I smart? No, I was not smart. Wait. Can I still come back here? No. No, I can't. Good, okay. Yeah, well, if you're not familiar, Emacs has um, a feature that I don't think any text editor has that's not Emacs, which is unlimited undo. Meaning, like, if you do something and then you undo it and then you do something else again, like, how do you go back to what you did up here? Um, and Emacs has that by default, but I have this thing, undo tree visualize, which will actually, like, give you, like, a graph for all your, all your states, like, forever. Um, yeah comes in handy i don't actually know the um the commands for it <laughs> i just use the visualizer like a nib all right mm -hmm. i mean that looks just like what i've got label and then i input right next to it or the label would go first and literally not have a new line anywhere that shouldn't matter You got it. Sure is. CXU, that form that Section 8 just posted, by the way, in Emacs lingo, when you do C hyphen X, that means hitting Control X and then letting go and then hitting U. And that pulls up this thing on the right here. Learn into Emacs. Congratulations. All right. Uh, is this going to look right? CSS gives me a headache. What is oh? The I see now. We have an input inside the label. Yeah, like this. And we don't have to do it like that anymore. We can actually make it readable. There we go. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, There's a neat trick we can do. One weird trick. Yeah, for loop counter, I think is what it is. Hmm. 
Yeah, cool. I don't know. Maybe having the numbers there is a little too... cluttery. But cool, all right. Uh, I mean, this is the HTML that we needed, really. Um, preset edit, edit preset. Well, we. Nice take on cyan's theme. <laughs> Okay. I guess we're ready to put this into the Python, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have no idea if this is going to work. Hey! Suck it darn dang, it worked. <clears throat> cool. Um, nice. Okay, and so as you can see here, yeah, cool. Wow. Very good. So we have a special URL here that has parameters. You can see here, dynamic distant buildings for OpenMW equals on. Yeah, it is a bit ugly. It's a bit fugly, but um, we'll need to make sure that this gets drawn still. Um, we're going to have to send along also what preset we're doing. Mm, I'll figure it out. <laughs> but what, we'll do, what you do is, theoretically, as a user... You just come down here and you say, yeah, you know what? I really don't want to generate a nav mesh cache. I like that extra loading. Thank you very much. And then we can see here off uh, or no. Yeah, right. There you go. Oh, it's simply just not in the... Okay. It's just simply not in the uh, array. That's great. <laughs> Loading builds atmosphere. Yeah, sure. <laughs> wow, okay, cool. So, yeah, this is a big thanks to the user who emailed me about this feature. Um, This is an awesome idea. We basically got it all working right here, too. I just got to do some, some stuff to pretty it up, right? Like, make it actually usable. So what, where we go from here is we take uh, let's see am I actually hmm actually interesting so this is not what I'm printing here this is printing nothing um, what is my get parameter hmm let's just do this oh jeez let's just print all of get but the idea is that we have something in the get info, right? That whole nasty URL has got data for us to extract and do stuff with. No. Yes, wait, that's good. That's legit. Here we go, query. Yeah, okay, this is it. Query dict, interesting. So, okay, okay, if request get, okay, okay. 
indexing it will error if it's not there, but if I use this get method, it will just give me nothing it's there, if it's there. Um, let's test this. Well, that's no good. Because <laughs> hmm, that's definitely a preset. Excuse me, right there in the dict. Yeah. Yeah. Get. That will break it. Yeah, see? <clears throat> That's why you don't do this. There we go. Oh, it worked. Hey, ho. Oh. Cool. Except for not when I wanted it to. Hold up. So this is the request with actually a preset. Yeah, I think, <laughs> oh no. Oh wait, no, see, yeah, I'm a dummy, I can't read. I can't read what I wrote myself on the page here. Cool, okay. So that works, so basically this is the condition, where we'll, this is the place where we'll write the code to handle the user's customized mod list, okay? Um. So we'll take all this data, which looks something like that, and we'll just say like for mod in and just to be sure we're, you know, dealing with the things we want to deal with here. Let's go ahead and uncheck. Uh, we need that lag. I need that nav mesh lag. Also, I turn the nav mesh off. I like it when the NPCs walk into the walls, not around them. Please. Yeah, okay, boom, there we go. And then so from here, we would simply query the database, right? Um, mod objects get slug. Mod, what would actually be slug? If we're using the correct names here, then we can call this a mod. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, so we would build from here what's going to go back to the user. Um, data paths, plugins, and all that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's just about there. Really great idea. It's going to round out all the features in 5.10 pretty nicely. We're going to have a pretty nice 5.10.1 update, which is going to include all the fixes 
she, uh, that Gonzo pulled off in response to Shinino's feedback. And yeah, they're just the various neat things that we decided we wanted to do on top of it um, as well. So yeah. Very good stuff. And we implemented that. I'm going to go ahead and deploy the entire website here. Um, oh, you know, not actually, because we're not finished. We're not quite finished with this checkbox feature yet, so we're going to keep it on the beta for now. And you all folks at home can play along too. And with that, wow, we checked off everything today, 14 things. That was a really big list, by the way, folks. Um, stay tuned for what we bring you next in the future. We got 6.0 mod list coming up. <clears throat> um, MLOCs related news for the website also coming up. I have a dash of mods that are in the workings. I'm going to be renaming the total overhaul patch set to MOMW patches. We got con contributions to that set from Sophia and others. It's no longer just total overhaul or my thing anymore, which is really great. Um, and yeah, thank you all for joining. Uh, have a lovely day. Happy modding. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Cheers.